Hi everyone, my name is Ben Grist and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing another ancient Greek word study and this is part of our series on ancient Greek and biblical Hebrew words and so the word that we're going to be looking at today is splanknismai. Splanknismai is often translated as compassion and I guess compassion for most is just simply this feeling when maybe you're watching the TV and you are watching a, an advert by some charity and it's sharing about poverty and suffering and you feel something, you are quite moved by it. But I guess for most, that's all they are. That's all that ever happens. And they don't actually experience anything more than just that feeling at that particular moment. But this word splachnizomai is so, so much more than that. And that's what we're gonna be looking at today. So what is it? Splachnizomai. It's an ancient Greek word. It appears 12 times in the New Testament. It's Strong's number 4697. And it's a verb, but not any verb. It's a verb in what's called the middle voice. We don't really have the middle voice in English. It's just the passive and the active, depending on who's performing the action. But the middle voice, it's kind of like a third style where the subject not only involves the action, but is also in some way concerned with the action as well. And that actually makes a lot of sense because with a verb like this, it actually happens physically to the subject. In the Bible, it's often translated as just to feel compassion. But I'd say it has so much more depth than just life. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 14, we read this incredible verse in an amazing story where Jesus looks over to this crowd and how he responded. It says, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion, spagnizomai, on them and healed their sick. I feel like here though, our English word for compassion doesn't seem to even come close to giving us this picture God intends for us to have of compassion his way, God's way. Splanknizomai comes from the noun splanknon, which literally means inward parts, the inner parts of the human body, like the organs, but also the mentality and the emotions too. It's related to the ancient Greek word splen, and probably ultimately contributed to our English word of spleen, literally like our intestines. And so literally, splanchnizomai, it means to be moved in the inward parts, especially our organs like our intestines and our kidneys. Isn't it incredible how this word basically describes the feeling we get when we experience these kind of emotions? If you ever talk about uh, having butterflies in your tummy or a gut feeling, actually, these are the kind of feelings when you have really strong emotions like anxiety or intense sadness, and that goes the same with compassion as well. When you feel that incredible compassion inside of you, that deep sympathy, it's a feeling that you get from your stomach as well. Similarly, in Latin, we derive this word viscera, talking about the inward parts of the human body and how we can feel such strong visceral feelings like that of sympathy and empathy for others. Literally, gut level emotions that cut down to the core of who you are. Back in the day, many other ancient Greek writers and poets used to refer to this feeling as being very negative and violent, extreme emotions most of the time. But actually, with the Hebrews and the New Testament writers, they started to see it as actually positive feelings of kindness and love and compassion. Going back to the story in Matthew 14, we see how Jesus is feeling this incredible, deep, inward, yearning, gut pain inside of him as he sees this crowd of people in need of healing, in need of saving, in need of loving. Our English word compassion comes from the Latin word com and pati, meaning literally to suffer with. And every single person Jesus met, he suffered with that person. He suffered with the leper. He suffered with the woman who had just lost her daughter. Compassion is so much more than sympathizing with someone and just saying, I, I'm here for you, I feel sorry for you. Actually, it's about feeling that gut-wrenching feeling inside of you. And in one sense, even to experience the suffering of someone else, that other person in front of you. Whatever faith you may or may not have, the gospel tells a story of ultimate love and ultimate sacrifice, of Jesus, the Son of God, who did no wrong, who deserved no punishment, and yet he felt this compassion for us, this deep yearning for us. He even sweated blood at one point, before then taking all of the punishment we deserve and dying for it on the cross, before then resurrecting. We have the opportunity to know this kind of compassion that Jesus felt for us, this kind of love, experience the forgiveness that Jesus offers us by accepting Jesus into our life. 
that's everything I got time for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. Please do comment below about what you'd like to hear more of in the future, or if you found this video useful, um, and I'll see what I can do. But that's all I got time for today, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.